Hi, my name is Tim, and I'm going to talk today about how to synthesize motion blur. Motion during the exposure of a photograph results in motion blur, as we can see in the car that becomes blurred over time. The longer the photograph is exposed, the larger the motion blur looks. While motion blur is often accidental and unwanted in photographs, motion blur can also be used purposefully to express movement, such as in the city commotion example on the right. We aim to synthesize this effect from two sharp photographs or adjacent video frames and produce the motion blurred image that would have occurred during the time between those inputs. To see why motion blur synthesis can be a hard problem, here's a toy example with a blue object moving behind a yellow occluder. The true motion blurred image for this scene should blur the moving blue object but keep the yellow occluder sharp, as we see in this rendering. Now, let's imagine trying to predict that motion blurred image from two sharp inputs taken at the start and end of the animation. An existing method is to estimate optical flow, which predicts motion vectors between the images, and then blur along those motion vectors. But naively using optical flow to synthesize motion blur doesn't properly handle the yellow occluder and incorrectly blurs it in addition to the moving blue object. To fix this, we train a neural network to predict motion vectors and weights along the line of each vector. This means that our network can correctly model the motion of the blue object while avoiding the yellow occluder when blurring. This allows our model to learn to produce renderings that correctly obey occlusion relationships between objects, thus rendering the true motion blur in our toy example. Here's a diagram of our network architecture which is a U-shaped neural network that predicts lines at each pixel. A differentiable renderer then blurs along those lines as we explain in more detail in our paper. One of the biggest challenges of this project was getting sufficient training data. Capturing actual motion blurred images with sharp image pairs would be really difficult and expensive. So instead, we leveraged the vast numbers of YouTube videos to generate data. We first train a frame interpolation neural network, which predicts the middle frame given two inputs. We then use the frame interpolation neural network to generate pseudo ground truth motion blurred images by recursively interpolating frames to fill in the gaps in time. We then average all of the interpolated frames to produce realistic motion blur training data. Here we show performance on an evaluation dataset we constructed where we recorded super slow motion video to get motion blur input-output pairs. The y-axis represents PSNR, where higher is better, and the x-axis represents runtime and is in log scale. When compared against using optical flow, our method is a lot higher quality. And when compared against directly using frame interpolation, our method is still higher quality and a good amount faster. If we take a look at the lines our model is producing, we gain some insight as to why the results are looking better. In addition to being able to handle occlusions, as we saw earlier in the toy example, our model can represent complex motions, such as the non-rigid waving flag or shadows moving along the ground in this example. When we look at the resulting motion blurred images, we see that our model produces more accurate motion blurs, whereas the optical flow approach often suffers from ghosting or duplicated objects. Now we'll show some potential use cases of this technology. Motion blurring the background while keeping a subject sharp is an effect called panning and is common in action photography. Adding motion blur to moving water can make the water appear more smooth. Our method can also be used as a more efficient way to add motion blur when rendering animations. And it is useful to create a time lapse from regular video footage where the motion blur helps the time lapse look more natural and smooth. Our method has many other applications to photography and video effects, and can also be used to generate training data for motion deep blurring and as a visual cue for image and video understanding. Thank you to my collaborators at Google Research, especially my co author, John Barron. And for more information, please visit our project website. Thank you.